you know, my heart goes out to anyone who suffered through that kind of uh, abuse and, and experience. Hollywood reacts as fallout from Harvey Weinstein's sexual harassment scandal continues. More A-list stars speaking out about mistreatment as Weinstein's wife announces she is leaving him. I think Georgina needs to take a stand and be there for her husband. Meanwhile, Lindsay Lohan calls out Weinstein's wife and calls for support for Harvey. Why are Chip and Joanna Gaines really stepping away from their hit HGTV show? And will they ever return to TV? The Fixer Upper stars are opening up exclusively in this week's People Cover Story. Fight me, Crystal. Please, call me mom. The all-new Dynasty is loaded with drama. Liz Gillies reveals what's new on the show and why she loved reprising one of the original series' biggest characters. Why is Kylie Jenner's new phone cover making fans speculate that she's having a baby boy? Hey, good morning, People.com and Facebook Live. Welcome to People Now. A great show for you today. Later on, we're going to be in the kitchen with famed chocolatier Jacques Torres, who's going to be whipping up some perfect Halloween chocolate. Look at him go. Even a special beverage for us. In honor of that, we want to know what your favorite Halloween treat is. Let us know in the comments below. But first, here's what you need to know and what's trending today. Watch. Oh, look, it's horrible. It's awful. And, uh, you know, my heart goes out to anyone who suffered through that kind of... Uh, abuse and, and experience and uh, I, I hope it sheds a light on the issue and, and uh, people you know don't continue to abuse their position of power and um, people are manipulated into situations, situations they don't want to be a part of. Our star Chris Hemsworth is the latest celebrity to speak out over the Harvey Weinstein sexual assault and harassment allegations. The actor did not mince words about the movie mogul Tuesday night at the red carpet premiere of his film. And the Weinstein fallout continues as Harvey's wife of 10 years, Marquesa designer Georgina Chapman, announced Tuesday that she's leaving her husband. The two married in 2007 and have two children together. In a statement to People, Chapman says, My heart breaks for all the women who have suffered tremendous pain because of these unforgivable actions. I have chosen to leave my husband. Caring for my young children is my first priority, and I ask the media for privacy at this time. A source tells people that there are plans for Weinstein to enter a treatment facility, but the mogul, who has been staying at a Los Angeles hotel, has not left yet. On Tuesday, Gwyneth Paltrow and Angelina Jolie added their accounts of alleged mistreatment to the list of women who have already spoken out about Weinstein's harassment. Paltrow revealing to the New York Times that Weinstein sexually harassed her in a hotel room after hiring her for the lead role in the movie Emma when she was only 22. The encounter allegedly ended when Weinstein placed his hands on her and suggested a massage. Jolie also recounted a, quote, bad experience in a hotel room with the movie producer during the release of Playing by Heart in the late 90s. But it seems one famous face is standing by Harvey Weinstein. Watch this. I feel very bad for Harvey Weinstein right now. I don't think it's right what's going on. Uh, I think Georgina needs to take a stand and be there for her husband. And he's never harmed me or done anything wrong to me. And we've done several movies together. And so I think everyone needs to stop. I think it's wrong. So stand up. Yes, Lindsay Lohan defended Harvey Weinstein in a now deleted Instagram story video. The actress saying the, that she supports Weinstein even after several women made allegations of sexual misconduct against him. Now, while she deleted the video less than an hour after it posted, social media users were quick to record and share. Lohan, who starred in two Weinstein production company movies, Bobby and Scary Movie 5, said that what's happening to Weinstein is, quote, wrong and that he never harmed or did anything to her. She also mentioned Weinstein's wife, Georgina Chapman, saying that she should be there for her husband. Well, Brad Pitt, on the other hand, was not feeling sympathetic toward Weinstein when the movie mogul allegedly sexually harassed Pitt's then-girlfriend, Gwyneth Paltrow, back in 1995. A source tells People that Pitt threatened to beat up Weinstein at a Hollywood party that year, poking Weinstein in the chest and saying, quote, you will not ever do this to Gwyneth ever again. The source adds that Pitt made it clear there would be consequences if Weinstein did try anything again and described it as, quote, giving Harvey a Missouri whooping as Pitt grew up in Springfield, Missouri. At first, Weinstein tried to explain. Uh, then, according to the source, he, quote, stopped and listened and got the message. The source notes that Pitt was not yet a major star at that time and was taking a big risk by confronting Weinstein. Still, the source says, quote, he's one of the only men in Hollywood who stood up and said something. That's a fact. After the confrontation, Paltrow told the New York Times that Weinstein called her and threatened her not to speak to anyone else about it. She said, quote, I thought he was going to fire me. He screamed at me for a long time. It was brutal. 
Paltrow would go on to win a Best Actress Oscar in 1999 for the Weinstein-produced Shakespeare in Love. Pitt also worked with Weinstein again, starring in Inglorious Bastards in 2009, which the Weinstein Company released and Harvey executive produced. But the source clarifies that Pitt did that movie because of his relationship with Quentin Tarantino, and it had nothing to do with Harvey Weinstein. Well, switching gears to this, you could practically hear hearts breaking across the country when Chip and Joanna Gaines announced that the upcoming fifth season of their hit HGTV show, Fixer Upper, would be the last. Now that we've all kind of gotten through that denial phase, fans everywhere are left wanting to know one thing. Why? Well, Chip and Joanna are this week's People cover story, and they're telling people exclusively the real reason that they're hanging up their demo day hammers, or should I say four reasons, who are all named Drake, Ella, Duke, and Emmy K, the couple's four children, ranging in age from seven to 12 years old. Since Fixer Upper first premiered back in 2013, the family has filmed 11 months out of the year, which is unheard of for most reality shows. Their hard work paid off because the show quickly became the highest rated show on HGTV, turning Chip, a contractor, and Joanna, an interior designer, into household names. But juggling the demanding production schedule, plus a young family and their businesses, started to take its toll. But the ultimate deciding factor? Seeing the effect of nonstop production on their children. Chip explains to people, quote, I realized the show was demanding time from me, and I needed to be giving it to our business, to our relationship, and to my family. That's the million dollar question. How far can you push it before something really does break down? Joanna adding, quote, our plan is to press pause, refresh, and pour even more love into our family and our businesses. And what about those tabloid rumors that marital strife played a role in the decision to end the show? Well, the couple makes it very clear after 14 years together, their marriage is as solid as it's ever been, and they want to keep it that way. Chip saying, quote, anybody gets exhausted and you say or do things that you don't mean. Joe and I don't want to find ourselves years from now realizing there were warning signs letting us know we were exhausted. We would rather stop here. We have the chance to regroup and refresh. So there you have it. That leaves only one more burning question. Will we ever see Chip and Joanna on our TVs again? Well, good news, everybody. Joanna herself says there might be a chance. She admits, quote, we're entrepreneurs at heart, so we'll always be looking forward to what's next. As it relates to TV, you just never know. We are hopeful for what God has for us and our family. So it looks like we'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, what is next for the Shiplap Sweethearts? How about a well-deserved vacation and carving out some quality time with the kids? And don't worry, because you can still get your gains fix in lots of ways. They've got a real estate company, the Magnolia Market at the Silos real Retail Store, wallpaper and furniture lines, a quarterly magazine, luxury vacation rentals, an upcoming restaurant, and a line of home decor items for Target that launches in November. I'm exhausted just thinking about it. I guess they're gonna have their hands full. Uh, read the full story on Chip and Joanna Gaines in this week's issue of People. So busy. I know. I think we're going to see them on TV again, though. No question. For I mean, sure. <laughs> no question, right? We really want to. So All right, you guys. Well, it's Chocolatier. Jacques Torres is in the kitchen right now. We're so excited. He's getting ready to show us some tips and tricks for making the perfect Halloween candy. So we're asking you all morning what your favorite Halloween treat is. It's yes. right around the corner. Allie says she loves Hershey Kisses. I do, too. Dark chocolate. Uh, Lindsay says chocolate. my favorite is popcorn balls with caramel ch and chocolates. Okay. Patricia says anything chocolate. Well, she's in luck because we're going to be whipping up some chocolate very soon. And Edward says he loves uh, Reese's peanut butter bats. Bats? bats? <laughs> I didn't know about that. New things are being discovered. You know what I hate? Those marshmallow bunnies. Don't show me one of those. I just look hot up on the bats thing, so I want to let us know. Describe Anything that's it. Reese's peanut butter chocolate <laughs> is good. All right, keep the Facebook comments coming in. Tell us what you love uh, for Halloween candy. We'll check in with you again soon, but first, Andrea, more for us in Star Trek. Yes, Jeremy. So earlier in the show, we heard from Chris Hemsworth speaking out on Harvey Weinstein at the Thor premiere. We're going back to some fun sightings at the premiere, kicking off Star Treks with a rare red carpet appearance from one of our favorite Hollywood couples. Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth enjoyed date night at the Los Angeles premiere of Thor Ragnarok which is the latest Marvel film starring Liam's older brother, Chris. The couple, who have not publicly attended an event together since October of 2016, walked hand in hand on the starry red carpet. Cyrus wore a black and multicolored floral dress, while her beau kept things classy in a black suit and color-coordinated tie. Since reconciling last fall, Miley and Liam, who dated for three years before splitting in 2013, have kept their relationship out of the public eye. In a recent interview with radio host Howard Stern, Cyrus revealed the reason behind their breakup explaining, I had to. I don't like when relationships are two halves trying to make a whole. So I don't think that I have that codependency. I think people that break up and get back together, that's awesome. You get time to be yourself. You get time to grow up. I think if you're growing up attached to another person, you never really get solid as your own being. 
Well, we are all very happy that Miley and Liam are back together. They look adorable. Adding on to the happy couples, Chris Hemsworth attended the premiere with wife Elsa Pataki. The Aussie heartthrob sported a cobalt blue suit with an open collar shirt, while his wife of seven years looked stunning in a tight black gown. Although the couple's three children were not on the red carpet, Chris opened up about having them on set while shooting in Australia. Apparently, they have a lot of energy. Check it out. My kids are very chaotic. They're very physical and active, and uh, they'd come to set occasionally and sort of handbrake whatever production was, was occurring at the time. The entire cast, Chris's co-star Mark Ruffalo walked Tuesday night's red carpet with his wife and children, revealing that the kids found creative ways to have fun down under. Yeah, it was a family what, what, affair. What, what, what were they all doing? Did they get really bored? Did they go totally away? bored? My fun, well, they went to the uh, my kids went to the leather making department and got to make leather phone cases and <laughs> belts and fanny packs. That was their favorite part of the whole experience. Did you I, I have a Thor saddle, a, a donkey saddle that my kids made. Sounds like a blast. But there were certain parts of filming that Mark wasn't so keen on. Take a look. Having to take my shirt off with Chris Hemsworth standing next to me with his shirt off. <laughs> That's very uncomfortable and very painful. Oh no, then give yourself a little more credit here. Thor Ragnarok hits theaters November 3rd. All right, now watch this. Here we go! Hands up! Hands up! Whoa! Here we go! Woo! Looks like fun. That was Sierra and her three-year-old son, Future Zahir, having some fun at Disneyland on Tuesday. The pair spent the day at the park with the legendary Janet Jackson and her nine-month-old son, Issa Almana. Janet was out celebrating her sold-out concert at the Hollywood Bowl. We think Disney is the perfect place to do just that. Jackson's former backup dancer, James Collins, made sure to document the group, getting a picture with Mickey Mouse, and he posted it to his Instagram story. It's very cute. Jackson was spotted riding the King Arthur carousel with her son, and later took a ride with Sierra on Space Mountain. Looks like a lot of fun, and I'm really jealous because I've never been to Disneyland to this day. All right, moving on to this. Kylie Jenner may not have officially confirmed her pregnancy yet, but fans are going crazy over a series of Snapchats that the 20-year-old posted on Monday that might have just revealed whether she's having a boy or a girl. So first, Kylie posted a picture of some cinnamon rolls in a pan. Could this be a way of confirming she's got a bun in the oven? I don't know, but some fans definitely think so. Then King Kylie showed off some cute new Kylie Jenner lip kit phone cases, posting a photo of two pink phone cases with a blue phone case in the middle and her caption, I'm thinking blue, followed by a little blue heart. So this has got fans thinking she might have just revealed she's having a boy. She later snapped a selfie of her using the blue phone case as well, proving how much she's feeling blue these days. Well, if Kylie is pregnant with a boy, this would go against earlier reports that she's expecting a girl. Guess we'll have to keep our eyes peeled for more clues to be 100% sure. And those are your Star Tracks for today. Stay with us, guys. We're giving you your royal breakdown and talking Kate Middleton's first baby bump sighting. People going crazy. Plus, famed chocolatier Jacques Torres showing us how to make the perfect Halloween treats. Stick around. This is King Cutie in People. His Royal Highness Prince George Alexander Louis of Cambridge. These are George's parents, George's home, his nana, the queen, and his staff of 644 Englishmen. This is George's dog, Lupo, who inspired his favorite book, The Adventures of the Royal Dog, Lupo, one George will share now that he's a big brother. People. The details make the story. Don't miss this week's People. Fallon, that is no way to talk to your new boss. Right. He offered me the COO position. That was supposed to be mine. Which is why I turned it down the first time. But then I met you. There'll be plenty of time for this after the wedding. Bite me, Crystal. Please. Call me mom. The Carringtons are back and the drama is juicier than ever. That's the CW's new reboot of Dynasty, which premieres tonight. Well, we talked to one of the show's stars, Liz Gillies, who plays Fallon Carrington. So how did she prepare for such a fiery role? Maybe a little binge watching the original? Take a look. 
That is a huge feat. Of the course. original series went on for a very long time. Yes. I, I, I've done quite a bit of it. I think I'm in three now, okay. season three, so I've seen a bit. Alexis has arrived. I'm perfectly sane, so take this junk and your blonde tramp and get out of my home. My version of Fallon is very different than uh, Pamela Sue Martin's, who's the current Fallon of what I'm watching right now. There were two. Pamela Sue Martin was so effortlessly of that world. You, she floated in and out of scenes with grace and kind of this aloofness that you could just tell she's used to this life and she grew up having a lot of money. And her remarks were kind of uh, not few and far between. She had a few of them. She didn't like Crystal, but my my uh, Fallon definitely takes after her mother a lot more. She's uh, got a lot more gusto, much more bite. Um, and she's very emotional. She's she's wild. She's She's got a lot of different sides to and it. She's definitely very feisty. But very you've played feisty. feisty characters before. Yes. Do you like playing the good girl or the bad girl? I'm not sure I ever played the good girl. I like <laughs> what I like about all the quote unquote bad girls I've played is they're not just bad girls and they're human characters and they're very flawed and that's what I, not to get all inside the actor studio on you, but that's what I like <laughs> about them. They have lots of layers and so it makes it fun. It's more than just, you know, the mean girl. Well, we all know and love the iconic dynasty from the 80s, the cat fights, the shoulder pads. But fast forward to 2017, how did this cast make the show their own? Watch. We had to make a lot of changes, because if you go back and watch the original Dynasty, like I have, they said a lot of things that maybe that would fly in the 80s, it would never would be okay down, now. Yeah. No, <laughs> our cast is super diverse, which is a big change from the um, original Dynasty, our Crystal's Latina. Also, we've changed Heather Locklear's character, Sammy Joe into a man who's dating, uh, who's dating Steven, my brother, who is now out and proud, as opposed to like the whole struggle with his sexuality that they had yeah. on the original. I think he married two women. So this is, you know, it's 2017. We don't need to beat around the bush. He's so happy. Everyone's confident in who they are, and our cast is diverse. So we've made a lot of necessary improvements. And even though it's not your mother's dynasty, your mother will enjoy it very much. I think that this generation will have the same feel. Can't wait to watch Catch Dynasty tonight at 9, 8 central on The CW. Iconic TV star Judith Light may be known for her breakout roles in One Life to Live and Who's the Boss, but the 68-year-old actress currently stars as Shelly in Amazon's critically acclaimed Transparent. Judith, who sat down with People and Entertainment Weekly editorial director Jess Cagle, opened up about her refreshing role on the show and how her strong bond with lead actor Jeffrey Tambor elevates their scenes. Watch. There was another scene that Jeffrey and I did where Maura comes over to see Shelly when Shelly's husband is dying. This was in season, end of season one, I think. And there was just something about the connection and the rapport that Jeffrey and I had in that scene and have that is so remarkable to me. You know, we've been friends for a long, long time. So you used to do theater. We started out at the Milwaukee Repertory uh -huh. Theater in 1971 together. I mean, I remember the day that I did the theater communications group auditions, and that day they said to me, well, there's this guy, and he's got all these people that want to talk to him about going there for the following season. And they said, I said, what's his name? And they said, Jeffrey Tambor. And the name just always stuck in my head. And you were, you became friends? We became point? friends in 1971 yeah. when we were at the Milwaukee Rep, and then I left and he stayed there. And then we, I played his girlfriend on a show uh, several years ago that he and John Lithgow were doing called 20 Good Years for NBC. And uh, I played his girlfriend. Did you ever date in real life? No. Well, you were both young and single and attractive. He was married. Oh. He was married. Still, did you ever date? <laughs> no, I still did not. No, I. Okay, so he was married, so that wasn't an option. Yeah, that's right. Been a good story, though. Yeah, I know, would have been. But, <laughs> but just, no, just but we out. have this really strong friendship and really big heart connection. He's just amazing. Now, besides her relationship with Tambor, Judith also opened up about her unconventional marriage. She and her husband of 32 years, actor Robert Desiderio, spent much of their time on opposite coasts. But Judith says a little bit of space is all they really need. Watch. In the best. I highly recommend it. When I was in L.A. full time, right before Ugly Betty moved us back here, Michael Bloomberg, God bless him, gave the tax break for filming here in New York. And we brought, ABC said, Ugly Betty goes to New York. And that's what we did. And Robert said to me when that happened, when they came to us, he said, what are you gonna do? And I said, well, I think the question is, what are you gonna do? Because <laughs> mama's going to New York. And we said, we're gonna have to figure a way to work this out. So he would come in to visit every couple of weeks. 
Now, he loves California. And I would never ask him to leave there, and he would never ask me to leave here. Now, mind you, I go back and I shoot transparent, and I'm there for five months. Right. So I'm there all the time. So then when I'm done there, I come back here. And like, he's flying here like today. So we're gonna be together for a few days, and then I'll go back to California. And then, so it really is this kind of solid, different kind of intimacy that comes about out of this and the support for each other and each other's lives. And I just think, I think people need alone time. I know I'm one of those people that, that, that needs that. I don't know about you, but I... Uh, of course, everybody does. Well, not everybody. And you never have to have that conversation where you're like, I need alone time. That's right. Get out, get That's out, right. I'm on the face. plane. <laughs> All right, guys, big Royals news today as Princess Kate finally steps out for the first time after announcing her third pregnancy. Here with all the details is our Royals correspondent, Imogen Lloyd Webber. Thank you so much for being morning. here. Good morning. Good morning. Now, first of all, let's talk about this. It feels yeah. like it's been forever since we've seen Princess Kate out and about. How long has it actually been? It's her first public outing since August the 30th. Right, a long time ago. Yeah, when she and Princess William and Harry marked the 20th anniversary of Princess Diana's death. A few days after that came the announcement that Princess Kate was pregnant and once again suffering from hyperemesis gravidarum, which is an extreme form of morning sickness. It meant that she had to miss four-year-old Prince George's first day of school, which of course she was very sad to do. We reported on yeah. that and I remember it being a big moment that was, she yeah. had to unfortunately step out there. of. Why was this though the event that, that she chose to make her first appearance after that long break away from the public eye? In her previous pregnancies, Princess Kate has begun to feel better the later on they go and this Buckingham Palace reception was for a cause close to her heart. Held in the white drawing room, the event was to celebrate World Mental Health Day and honor those working in the mental health field and the Royal Trio's Heads Together campaign. Heads Together, of course, aims to reduce the stigma surrounding mental health issues. Yeah, something uh, near and dear to their hearts for yeah. sure. And along with announcing her third pregnancy, the palace also confirmed that Princess Kate is suffering from that mm. severe morning sickness again, as you mentioned. Now, based on her previous pregnancies, how do we think she's doing at the, at the moment now? A royal aide told reporters, quote, the Duchess's condition is improving, but she is still suffering from hyperemesis gravidarum. She is delighted to be able to be here tonight. Royal Watchers were most excited to see Princess Kate in a blue Temperley London dress showing off just a very small baby bump, which looks like most of us after a bowl of pasta or just all the time. Just any time. It's for, for I mean, me. Genuinely, I've got a permanent food baby. Going, so. <laughs> uh, switching gears, though, it was reported this week which member of the royal family has the biggest spending power. In other words, which member of the royal family has the most influence over our closets and our wallets this year? My guess is Princess Kate. Right or wrong? Wrong. Really? Yeah. A recent eBay report has Princess Charlotte as the one who has the biggest spend of power. Of course. The yellow cardigan she was wearing in a photo to celebrate her second birthday in May had searches on eBay going up tenfold for it, and it instantly sold It out. is adorable. Yeah. Some reports out there say Princess Charlotte's influence is worth around $3.9 billion. However, Prince George won't be outdone by his little sister. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly 1,500 items related to him have apparently been sold on eBay in the last three months, compared to a mere 500 for Charlotte. And of course, I'm just over here waiting to see when Meghan Markle makes that list yeah. or tops the list. Yeah, yeah. For me, already for you, number one. I mean, you know, that's... That's, <laughs> that's my thing. Uh, what's Princess Charlotte's number one most popular fashion ensemble, though? There are quite a few to choose from, Jeremy, but I'm going with a smock dress she appeared in on the July German tour. She is That's so cute. A six-fold increase in interest, but it's also <laughs> such a quintessential old-fashioned British little girl look. It makes me smile every time. I know. I want it's one of those for my, my Adorable. Girls. Can you work that out for me? I, I feel like it's hard to get them now. I'm, no, my, my mom could probably get you Okay, one. we'll talk about this dead. afterwards. Yeah, uh, but there you go. That's all we have for now. Thank you so much for joining us, Imogen Lloyd Webber. Good to see you. Good to see you. Any moment you're scared to relive as you walk, as you watch back. Ooh, of this scared season? to relive. Yeah. I think there's a couple times in Milan that things get a little mm. crazy, and I'd be scared to Did relive they really? the Milan dinner. So. <sighs> <laughs> Oh boy, sounds like things are going to be going down in Milan. Our New Jersey housewives are no strangers to letting the claws come out during their epic trips outside the Garden State. But it does look like things may be a little more intense this year as the gang heads to Italy. The Real Housewives of New Jersey is our Toyota people pick of the day. So when I sat down with Melissa Gorga, Danielle Staub, and Margaret Josephs, I had to get the scoop on the intense road trip abroad. Spoiler alert, it involves lots of broken glass and dishes, things like that. Check it out.
epic ending. Need we say more? Danielle, you're uh, breaking glasses, throwing food, uh, back to back. The OG NG Housewives here. I, I don't know. It's it's pretty incredible. What pushed you to that point in Milan? Oof. Oof. Hmm. Um, truthfully, yes. Uh, honestly, I was defending actually Siggy at the time, and then she just she said something really out of line, and I think my words exactly to her with that's. <laughs> and she goes, you're up. And I, was, that, I lost it because it what I was doing was saying, this isn't right. It was between Margaret and Siggy. I shocked her. I was trying to break it up. <laughs> yeah, no surprise. No surprise there. Don't tell too much now. No. <laughs> but no, the, the fact of the matter is, is when, you, when you're trying to be, like, break things up and then somebody says something a little off, I have a tendency to go rogue. Okay. Just and FYI, we break a lot of glasses. A lot. That, well, no, I, it keeps coming up. Like, just the yeah. trailer alone. It's uh, like, the budget I think for it's the way we get out our aggression. Instead of, like, wringing your neck, we're just going to, like, yeah. this, this would do fine. Boom. Well, I'm we all read, read our, our do's and don'ts, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think better to break glasses than to pull pigtails. You want to take her and pull on those pigtails until they come out of her head. Yeah. 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 We're, we're not going to lay it. No one's going to touch yeah. anyone, but we're going to throw the glass. This is Jennifer Aniston, who told people her beauty secret. It's called water. This is Julia Roberts, who confessed her million dollar beauty treatment. It's called sleep. This is Courtney, who escapes to the spa. And Michelle, who swears by good lighting. And this is Beyonce, who woke up like this. These are people's insider trading tips to beauty from the world's most beautiful people. The details make the story. Don't miss this week's people. Guys, we're very excited. Halloween mm -hmm. is right around the corner, so that means one thing and one thing only, <laughs> chocolate and lots and lots of chocolate. Who better to ring in the sweetest time of year in terms of candy uh, than famed chocolatier, a.k.a. Mr. Chocolate himself, Jacques Torres. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Hello. So every holiday you know, comes with its fair share of candy, but Halloween is the epitome of chocolate treats. What goes into creating the Jacques Torres Halloween lineup? You know, we try to make it fun but still with very good chocolate, very good flavor, and um, everything real. That's exactly what we do in, in our company. Okay. Do you know how much chocolate you go through this time of year? Um, what I can tell you is during the year, we, we buy and make about 150 ton of chocolate. Wow. We sell certainly uh, 200 to 250 ton when we finish with it, adding all the almonds and butter and everything that we put in it. All right. Well, let's jump in here. You've got okay. some interesting stuff, and so, I'm anxious to get my hands dirty. Okay, easy. <laughs> what, I did, what I did, I um, went on the internet and find um, a pumpkin design. Okay. Okay, and then I find um, a witch design. Right. So I combined the two together, and you don't have to be an artist to do those, those little centerpiece. Uh, I put that under a piece of acetate paper, mm -hmm. center the, the, the witch as you want, then with a paper cone, I'm going to take some milk chocolate, but you can do everything with dark chocolate if you want. Oh, okay, right. So one thing about chocolate is chocolate needs to be tempered. So let me talk just one minute or less about that. When you, when you buy chocolates, like it is um, here, the chocolate is tempered. Mm -hmm. You see, you heard the, the yeah, snap. Right. Yeah. Okay, the molecules of fat are all together. When you melt it, those molecules of fat bro break down. Okay. You have to bring them back together. So what we do, we melt the chocolates and we put it in a glass bowl that's at room temperature. And then we see that when we scrape on the side, the chocolate starts to get a little bit thicker. Oh my goodness. So the chocolate set a little bit. So the good crystal of fat are forming again. And the chocolate is around 90 degrees. It's, oh. it's, now it's We've 85. Got the, oh. got the temperature so, yeah. it is, so it is temper now. So now is the temperature that you can work with, 90 to 80. Okay, right. Okay. Also, so it's important now yeah, to kind of get the right temperature. This yeah. is yeah. Well, thank you for yeah, that yeah, advice. Goes into it. I didn't know you could. I would have thrown these in the <laughs> microwave. Honestly, <laughs> Otherwise, so. it, it, will, it will not set. <laughs> it will not uh, have the same uh, mouth feel. So it has to be tempered. Okay. The milk, the dark, the, the the orange chocolate is actually white chocolate with a little mm -hmm. bit of food color. Okay. And so, so then you put yeah. the chocolate in that, and then. So you the chocolate on a paper cone. I'm going to grab one of those uh, little nuts. Allow me to move here. the rum, which is for later. <laughs> okay, yes. And then, you know, cut, cut the, 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 so you hold that like a syringe, sure, basically. Sure, right, okay. Okay, and then you can design with it. Oh, so you just trace oh, it, right, that makes sense. You just trace it over the parchment, so you can, you can try if you want. Okay. You can try to trace that side, and I'm going to make the dark chocolate ready. 
And so the tip for parents who are, are maybe doing the chocolate with their kids and, and heating it all up, what, what's your advice for that? Okay, so if you work with kids, keep it simple. But you know what, at the end of the day, this side's better, but <laughs> at, at the end of the day, you see, that doesn't matter actually if it's not completely straight or neat. Because when you when you finish it, it's actually going to look like a kid drawing. Right. Which is, mm. which is fun. That's what you want. Exactly. Right. That's exactly what you want. Andrea, great so, job. No, thank you. No you did here, good. I better get. <laughs> so I'm going to grab. Clean it up. So this bit. is the dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. So for the dark chocolate, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So you see what we do here. We trace the outside of the witch like that. Oh, so you're doing the, the, just the outline all the way around. Okay. And then when you're done with the outline, Again, like a kid drawing. Right. What you do, you start, you fill it. Oh, we're fill okay, so it does get filled in, right. And so okay. then, uh, at what point do you uh, apply the rest of the chocolate, like the, the, the orange there for the... Uh... Okay, so outline, fill mm -hmm. it. So the chocolate is going to start setting. It's going right. to become a little bit uh, harder. Mm -hmm. As soon as it's hard, not too, too much after, because otherwise the chocolate is going to retract and remove from the plastic. So as soon as the chocolate is a little bit hard, mm -hmm. then what you do, you take the orange chocolate. Which looks really incredible. Just yes, <laughs> and then yeah, straight in. And you will put that, so now. Just right over. Oh, okay. right just over right it. over. And it automatically, okay. because it's hardened, it's already, it stays separate. Exactly, so you put it over, and then you, you will grab an offset. Let's, I'm sorry, I don't sure, want to no make problem, you do no it. no problem, no problem. Okay, Please so do. you will take an offset spatula, and you will just Grab that and push your chocolate a little bit wider than where you trace. You see, just like that. Yeah. So make it, this is not enough, but make it thick enough that um, when, you, when you spread it, um, the chocolate will set, but it will be thick enough to not break. Okay. Okay. So it will have to be, let's say, 316 to a quarter of an inch. Yeah, it doesn't have to be very exact, but sure. about that. So let everything set on the table, on, mm -hmm. on the kitchen like that. Let's it set and then flip it and remove the, the, the plastic sheets, and the acetate paper, and then yeah. you get that. This amazing, amazing finished product. Yeah. That's really great. And you can eat the whole thing. It's oh not, I, I would think that it was more complicated than it is. So it's okay. kind of like a little it look, process It looks more complicated. Down. You don't have to be an artist. Yeah. And imagine that a member of your family get married, yeah. you can always snap a picture mm -hmm. and just take the outline of the two people and do exactly the same thing. And if you mess it up, inside the heart. And if you, you mess yeah. it up, you mess it up, you've got a great That's drink for it. us to forget that we've messed it up. <laughs> Tell us about this quickly so, if we have a couple minutes. So here I have some um, milk. Ooh. So be careful, the milk uh -huh. is very hot. So what we do, we put milk, chocolates, always a lot of chocolates, a little bit of starch, a little bit of milk powder. Starch, milk powder, okay. Okay, Mixed mix in. everything together. And a little bit of spice. I'm not going to put too, too much spice. And what do you call this? This is a hot chocolate hot with chocolate. spices. So, yeah, this is the so, best hot chocolate I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. So, <laughs> so far, a little better than my better packet than that I opened. I love, <laughs> I have to say that I love mm. to bring it back to a boil. When you boil it after adding the chocolate, okay, it so become mix, a little bit a more, again. Okay. yes. It, it became a little bit thicker and a little bit, uh, um, the, the texture is just more interesting when you boil it two times. I'm going to stand it back for this. Smells very yep. good. Ooh, <laughs> there that's we go. Okay. We should be fine. Okay, so, so we just hot chocolate with all those spices and everything mm -hmm. else. It looks amazing. Okay, but it smells amazing. because we have adults in the room, <laughs> <laughs> and it's morning, we spike it a little bit. You <laughs> with know? your favorite yes. rum. With my f so I like dark rum Here. with chocolate. Dark rum always okay. works very well with. Dark chocolate. Well, uh, I guess there's only one way to end this segment. A little sip. Oh, that's so good. That is Thank really you. Delicious. Thank you very amazing. much. Wow, happy Halloween. Yes. Day or a happy day Halloween. Or... Yeah, thanks Merci so much. Beaucoup. Wow, Thank this you. is amazing. This is I really great. appreciate it. Thank you so much. Mainly that you can be really messy with it and it still works. That's what I need for any uh, sort of recipe. So well, the project it, is perfect. Look, for me. at the end of the day, it's <laughs> chocolate and it's always Edible. And the kids are going to love so it, so you know, the adults. Well, if you look Harris, like a kid did it, it's fine. <laughs> thank you so much. And Merci if you guys beaucoup. want some of this famous chocolate, head to mrchocolate.com. Thank you. Yes. And guys, of course, all morning long, we've been asking you on Facebook Live what your favorite Halloween treat is. By the way, this is now your new favorite Halloween yes. treat, whether you know it or not. But Janice, uh, Janice says candy corn. Okay, fine. Um, we'll give you that, Janice. Brandy says anything sweet, keeping it general, I suppose. Teresa, switching things up with peppermint patties, and which you don't think of for Halloween. Kristen loves Three Musketeers. I don't think any, all those pale in comparison to this, though. So. I love anything that Jacques Torres does, including <laughs> these amazing candy, these special chocolate candies with the, the, the uh, little patterns on them and everything. That's just really adorable. Yeah, we did that just for Halloween. Yeah, so like we have a blood orange, we have a pumpkin, 
and um, and uh, unbelievable. It's yeah. too, too early in the morning. Too, I don't no. know how to turn the <laughs> no. one. But it looks great. Thank you so much. And guys, again, Merci coming beaucoup. up tomorrow, actor Jason Ritter revealing the best advice he's received from his father, John Ritter. Plus, Teen Mom two star uh, Kaylin Lowry joins us live as she dishes on the drama in the new season of Marriage Boot Camp Reality Stars. Yes, thank you so much for watching. And for now, we leave you with one last thing from Kevin, probably saves the world star Jason Ritter. Bye, guys. See ya. See you. Hi, I'm Jason Ritter, and this is One Last Thing. The last show I binged watch was the second season of Broadchurch. The last time I was starstruck was when, uh, oh, at the Emmys a couple weeks ago, uh, Laverne Cox smiled at me, and I, I, I felt a, a jingle through my whole body. The last time I laughed so hard I cried was, um, well, it's a very weird story, but basically it, 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 it was like a snake eating its own tail. The, the more I thought about how dumb it was, what I was laughing at, the more I laughed. And it just by the end of it, I didn't even remember what the original thing was, but it's a great feeling and I recommend it.